lot of the backstory came from uh, me not knowing his parents at all, uh, or my brothers not knowing his parents at all. They died when before we were born. I think my oldest brother might have been an infant, um, and one of when one of them died, we, I was very close to my my mom's parents. Uh, always visited them twice a year, and I think this was him wanting us to know how he grew up, what his family was like. Uh, we weren't close to his brothers because he couldn't travel because of the health reasons. We didn't go visit his brothers very often. I wasn't very close to my uncles or my cousins on that side, on his side of the family. And I think he really wanted me to know where he came from and who he was and why he was, why he raised us and why he is the way he is now. He's always been such an open person that I think I'm kind of used to when we meet people with me sitting right there, he just kind of tells everyone everything anyway. Um, he's just an open person about his life and our lives that it didn't, didn't seem unusual. It seemed very much in character with who he is. I was a little surprised at first. Um, I think I, I'm not somebody who likes to be the center of attention. Um, so I think I was a little bashful at first about it. Um, why me over my brothers? I'm not really sure. Honestly, um, we've always had a very open relationship, so maybe it just seemed more natural for him to tell me. Uh, I'm also can be a very talkative person once you really know me. So um, when the two of us get together, we can you know, talk for a while. So. Again, he really wanted me to know what his life was like. Um, you know, we hear stories, bits and pieces growing up, you know, oh, my dad used to do this, oh, my mom used to do this, oh, we used to do this as a family, um, but kind of it connected all the pieces, um, had a lot of the emotion behind it versus, you know, kind of just the story itself. And his faith is very strong and my faith is very strong because of his faith and kind of seeing where that came from. It's given me a lot more empathy for him. He's had so many health um, issues my entire life. I mean, the severe asthma kind of happened when I was very little, you know, first, second grade. Um, hasn't been doing vacations with us most of my life that um, it became, I think, such a normal part of our family, unfortunately, uh, that sometimes when he would get very upset about or very anxious or nervous about something was gonna happen, um, or with his ears very like upset and anxious about like this being too loud that I think me and my brothers almost got to the point where we were like, oh, he's being dramatic, not again, almost annoyed by it um, because it was, it's always just been there and it's been such a large part of almost everything that we do as a family um, that I think it gave me more empathy towards him that, you know, kind of seeing all those stronger emotions that were behind all of that, that maybe he hid from us when we were children, that now it's kind of like, okay, I'd feel the same way, you know, and not being annoyed, so to speak. I don't think I knew how emotionally neglected he really was. I knew as a child, I knew that, I knew some of those specific stories that are in the book, I had heard those stories but as a whole, I don't think I realized kind of the fear that he lived in or the constant anxiety that he lived with. Um, I also knew, I, I had also known that how important my Uncle Herb was in his life in terms of taking care of him and raising him. Um, but again, I don't think I realized to the extent at which that was the case, the extent to which, you know, my Uncle Herb really was his parent in kind of most aspects of his life growing up. I was actually, I was surprised, um, kind of little, the little things you don't think of as your, par your parents as like, you know, when they're in their late teens, early 20s, but as being in such good shape, he was talking about, you know, like lifting weights and things like that, that I was like, really? Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> or the, the risks that he would take and the trouble he would get into and, you know, hiking the mountain up and back and you know, a day, things that I think of my brothers doing or my husband doing that you just, my father seems to be a very cautious person at this point in his life. 
probably because of everything he's gone through, um, that to think of him not being cautious was amusing. <laughs> kind of why we were raised the way we were raised where some of my qualities, some of my character came from. Um, I'm a very physically affectionate person. My kids are very physically affectionate people. Um, and I think that's directly related to my dad being so affectionate and like physically affectionate, hugging, holding hands, putting your arms around each other because he so lacked that growing up that, you know, not only did he need that himself, but he wanted to make sure that we had that. Um, and now seeing that that's such a part of me and my relationships with my friends and my children and my husband. I wouldn't say that it necessarily changed. I think we've always been very open. We've always been very close. Um, it gives me, again, some more understanding to his motives behind certain things, but I'm not sure that it really changed our relationship much. Not to judge somebody based on, you know, your day-to-day -day interactions with them. You know, I lived with him and I still would get annoyed by those certain things, not knowing deeply what he was feeling inside. So now seeing that, saying like, okay, like how, how long did I judge him and say, oh my gosh, he's being so dramatic, and that's not the case at all. You know, I would be acting the same way I, if I were him. I think advice for another, for, you know, someone wanting to start a conversation with their parents, specifically their father, would probably be starting at the easy stuff. You know, what did you do as a child? What was your house like? What was your neighborhood like? You know, the things that are easy to talk about. And then, you know, hopefully from there, you'll get into like the deeper things. Um, I teach middle schools, so that's kind of where my expertise is. Um, and I teach inner city middle school, so we have a lot of kids who come in who are lacking emotionally from home, um, behaviorally and socially, and I feel like those two really go hand in hand. They don't know how to compromise with other students or with teachers. They don't look at you and say, you're an authority figure, so I'm gonna have respect for you. You really have to earn their respect. They act out a lot, a lot of um, I don't cares. If you confront them, when you're talking to them, it has to be more like side to side on their level you know, tell me what it is that you really want versus a punishment or a consequence or even just like that teacher look that, you know, everyone knows teachers have their own looks because uh, they just don't respond to that. They, they don't get that at home. Their parents don't act that way towards them, so they don't understand what that means. They don't know how to take those social cues and adjust their behavior. It needs to be spelled out for them. Academically, they don't have the support at home. They don't have somebody helping them with their homework. They don't have someone saying, good job, you got an A on your test. They don't have any of that. So as teachers, in that sense, you kind of have to be a parent and teacher. So the kids like that who don't have the emotional support of their parents um, or the physical support of their parents, teachers end up playing mom, dad, and teacher, um, and you're their cheerleader. You're the one kind of getting them into the after-school programs to get their academic help. You're the one, you know, setting up behavior plans for how to get their behavior back on track. You know, you're, you're their advocate. You're their cheerleader when they don't have that at home. Um, because of health limitations, so he's had severe asthma since I was little, that if the air is not filtered in the right way or if he's exposed to an allergen, which dust is a big one and mold is a big one, sends him into severe asthmatic reactions. And the other one is hyperacusis, which is a severe sensitivity to sound. So airplanes are way too loud. Driving in a car for hours on a highway is too loud. Um, he couldn't come to my graduation. He didn't come to any of my high school concerts. My wedding had to be partly inside, partly outside, with the outside only having a few tables because too many people talking in a room is too loud. Restaurants are out of the question. Movies are out of the question. It just it makes his ears ring for days and weeks on end. I mean, I know that we've seen it on Amazon. I know that you can go to like Barnes Noble and order it through there. Thank you.